dear colleagues, I would like to begin our um, panel discussion. I am Vladimir Klimanov. I am the head of the Economy State uh, Regulation Chair in Renepar, and our expert discussion is on financial involvement of regions in achieving uh, national development goals. So this is the major topic for GUIDAR Forum 2019. So yesterday we attended at a wonderful discussion between the two wise PMs and a number of regional governors and uh, the chairman of the budgetary committee in the state Duma, Mr. Makaro, and we had representatives from the um, counting chamber and the first uh, vice premier minister, and also at other round tables the topic was discussed. So I think that this topic is of interest uh, to representatives of federal, uh, regional, and municipal administrations. It's exciting for experts. It's not the first time for us to discuss uh, those inter-budgetary relations as part of uh, guider forums. And you see that among topics for discussion that between uh, the last and the present forum, there was a uh, 20th anniversary of uh, reforms of inter-budgetary relations. So, so they were actually launched uh, back at 1998, and we had the discussions, and traditionally we would discover something new. But this year we understand that intra-budgetary relations should be built uh, towards the need uh, to support national projects uh, financially, as well as uh, projects in the regions, and so we gathered here for these discussions. So may I introduce our panelists, and then I will give the floor to each of them to express their respective positions, and I will try to establish some dialogue, and I hope that as part of this two-hour discussion we'll have a chance for our audience to have their say and I see some familiar representatives from regional authorities, experts. So I believe that this would be a good opportunity for us to have this session. So let me introduce our uh, panelists. Igor Orlov, the governor of Arkhangelsk region. Yuri Roslak, an auditor of the counting chamber of the Russian Federation. Sergei Rebuchin, Chairman of the Councils of Federation Committee on Budget and Financial Markets, Larisa Roshkina, Director of Interbudgetary Relations Department of the Ministry of Finance of the Russian Federation, and also Dmitry uh, uh, Swartkovsky, member of the Committee on Budget and Taxes in the State Duma, and Yelena Pervinova, uh, Deputy Chairman in the Committee of the Council of Federation on Budget and uh, uh, Financial Markets. And uh, front row experts, Alexander Deryugin from the Institute of Economic Policy of Guiders Institute, Artem Brachowski from the Center of uh, Budgetary Relations Investigations, and Ludmila, Ludmila Pronina, a RANEPA professor. So, but I would like to Begin with Sergei Rebuchin. So, Sergei, the Council of the Federation, your position is in the middle. You are both a, you are focused on legislation and you realize the position of regions at the federal uh, level. So, the Council of Federation is called the Chamber of the Region. You have been involved in the system of inter budgetary relations of long ago. You first worked in the region, then in the counting chamber. Now you are heading one of the most critical committees in the Council of Federation. So what's your vision of the situation with financial involvement of the regions in implementation of the national project? 
uh, thank you. Thank you so very much for the chance to um, express my opinion. So I believe that our today's discussion is in the peak time, the critical time for shaping national projects. And our economy is going along the uh, track of national projects. So we have the special target uh, programs and uh, passports uh, or the so-called certificates uh, for the program are defended. And now we are in stage number two. Uh, that of signing agreement between the constituents of the Russian Federation and uh, mm, ministries and public offices of the Russian Federation. So this is an important uh, uh, job which should be finished uh, by 15th of February. And the Ministry of Finance is a responsible representative of the government, so which interacts with the Federal Assembly. Uh, and uh, there should be a special focus on numbers, scopes, and uh, attainability of the national projects. And it's important to pay attention to the fact that our indicators uh, should correlate with the regional indicators, regional programs, not only on the industry basis, but on different levels, national, regional, and municipal. And what's important, that it will directly influence quality and efficiency of how federal and consolidated budget of the Russian Federation is spent. So all goals are set in presidential uh, decree mm, 204. So items 15 and 16 are important. So they say that funding should be full uh, for the national projects should be full and timely. Given the global goal for the country and for the constituents of the Russian Federation. Uh, the volume of co-funding is minimal. However, it's unprecedented uh, from um, from the public budget to uh, 97 to three percent. So we need to achieve a high quality of decomposed indicators and attainability of the national projects. So in this situation, it's important that all budget of constituents of the Russian Federation to be balanced. So this is the precondition for achieving our main goal. So there are 12 strategic uh, uh, national initiatives. And in this situation, the Minister of Finance should pay special attention to individual approach to every constituent, because uh, the start conditions are very different. So, because as for demographics in the Caucasus, uh, the initial conditions are much better than in uh, Tivar or in Komi republics. So the approach to each region should be tailored, should be special. And at the federal level, it's very important that at this stage, while we are shaping approaches to implementing our national project, the Ministry of Finance should be uh, very uh, cautious and strict. Well, of course, I allow for some failures and drawbacks, yes, but we will have uh, uh, the first and the second semester of the year. But before we start uh, our national project, we should uh, calculate uh, them thoroughly in terms of resources and uh, timing. So I reviewed 
the calculations by the counting chamber, and I would agree with the conclusions that there are a lot of questions to the quality of indicators. There are a lot of questions on uh, how um, federal level is mapped uh, to the respective regional levels. And we need to analyze all the indicators to get uh, good results. Uh, so that would allow us to state some positive results in one year's time when we are back here. So, Sergey, and how do you see the role of the Council of the Federation in this structure? Um, your position is actually unique. So you express uh, the opinion of the regions, but you can also offer uh, like uh, legal initiatives um, at the federal level. Uh, thank you. That's a good question. Once we got the decree and once we started to draft uh, the first numbers of the national project, so we included our parliamentary control tool at uh, the level of industry and committees so we started to review the project. That's our tool. Our tool is the direct dialogue with the ministers. We would invite uh, a prime minister or his deputy, and, and we can express our wishes and some uh, legal initiatives. That's our tool, uh, which has been active from last September. And as a chamber of regions, it's our direct interest, as we have a lot of counter initiatives and remarks, and we will, f of course, follow up them. So those comments and remarks are reflected in our ruling after parliamentary hearings we had back uh, in last October. And we hope that the government will respond to all our recommendations and offers and will f keep using this instrument in the future. Uh, thank you. I would like to hand it over to Larissa Yeroshkina. The position of the Minister of Finance is always the most important one, and I always respect and value offices of the Ministry of Finance, so you are in tough conditions but you need to support all national projects at once, to support them with resources in all the regions of the Russian Federation uh, to resolve uh, goals which are uh, not multi-directed, but even antagonistic in nature. So, Larissa, the Ministry of Finance traditionally uses tools for inter- budgetary relations there are uh, there is a system of interbudgetary transfers and i know that there are a lot of changes but some um, successful mechanisms are kept so could you please in inform us to for us to have a complete uh, picture on how the ministry of finance will help regions in implementations of the national projects uh, good afternoon, dear panelists. It's a very exciting discussion. So, as announced by Vladimir, 20 years. Is it a lot uh, or not so much? So, as Sergei said, we need to understand where we are at this uh, start. What are the initial conditions for all our regions as we are about to resolve uh, key goals as stipulated by in the presidential degrees. We just got the uh, results for how uh, budget was met in the previous years, and I would like to be optimistic, and I would like to uh, share this optimism with you. Everything is quite good. It's better than our expectation with our financial colleagues were. When we were drawing up financial uh, outcomes of the first nine months of the year, so, please have a look uh, at this slide. So, uh, these are the results of how consolidated budgets in the constituents of the Russian Federation were met in 2016-2018. For um, the first time we had a surplus, and it's a unique surplus. If in 2007 it was of 50 billion rubles, so 11 years after it's made five 
800 uh, billion rubles. So those are average parameters, and when, as we like to benchmark, if we would take five um, major constituents, mm, Moscow, uh, Tumen, with the district Saint Petersburg, and others, so the surplus is of 30 uh, billion rubles. So the situation is much better than it used to be, even in 2017. So the number of uh, constituents with uh, uh, a surplus uh, is 67, as opposed to 38 uh, uh, four years before. So that uh, has to do with the growth of the tax base. So basically, the taxation revenues grew by 14%. We have only uh, two constituents with the uh, income growth below uh, 2017. But that had to do with special uh, uh, revenues they had in 2017. Yeah, we also see that the uh, financial uh, profits in some regions went by 23% in many regions. So um, the reason is that the budget for 2019 included some resources uh, um, which remained in their accounts. So the remaining amounts were of about two trillion rubles. So that is uh, nearly the amount of the intra-budgetary transfer. Um, but again, if we would remove uh, the uh, five best doing regions, so the remnants would still make uh, 700 uh, billion rubles, which is much better than one year before. So what's the conclusion? So. That means we have some reserves, and uh, mm, the situation that the budget of the last year was really met. Could you please help me with switching to the next slide? And the situation with the public debt is uh, much different from what we had a number of years ago. Slide number two, please. So the dynamics for the public debt change. Right. Have a look at the slide. You see that from 2017, the situation with uh, reducing uh, the public debt, so it showed a negative uh, trend, trend. So um, uh, the debt made 2.2 trillion rubles. So again, compared with the intra-budgetary transfers. So whether it's critical in terms of the tax base. So 26% at the moment. Of course, it's, the situation is different in different regions. And I will comment on that further on. Uh, but the reduction is obvious. One year ago, we had 31%. And this means that according to the growth of income and more balanced uh, lending policy, the regions uh, feel more comfortable. And right now the situation uh, has stabilized. Uh, qualitative uh, changes of the debt. You see the pink uh, seg segments. This means that we have more uh, loans from the budget, uh, loans uh, with uh, very low uh, interest rate, 0 0.1 interest rate. And if uh, we compare these rates with the commercial rates, according to the results of the previous year, the average uh, mid-term rate is 8%. Uh, a year before, it was 8.8%. Here we also see positive dynamics. We also have two regions, two subjects of the Russian Federation. Which uh, until now, they have the higher um, uh, level debt than uh, the level of uh, income. Uh, but a year ago, we had several uh, regions like that. Again, you see the significant improvement. Uh, we have only six regions, according to 2018, uh, which have the market level state debt of more than 50%. This means that there were qualitative uh, changes in the uh, 
loans policy. It's important uh, to understand that uh, the level of payment is rather comfortable. It's not stressful for the regions. I mean the debt repayment here. 43% from the budget loans and at the end of 2017 there was an unprecedented decision to move the repayment uh, dates uh, for the regions of Russia for up to 7%. So they will start pay, repaying it not within three years, but within seven years. Restructuring uh, was very beneficial for the regions. And in 2017, 2018%, uh, the regions will pay only 5% from the total amount of the debt. Uh, 10 years and uh, 20 years in the last years. According to the results of 2018 and 2019, we will see uh, the income growth above the inflection. And if this is the situation, uh, um, there will be additional period of five years, extremely comfortable conditions. Managing uh, the market level loans, we have more regions. We will now have uh, some uh, securities and half of the regions they now know how to manage um, their debt using securities. There is a, a number of regions who reduce the market level debt and that's the majority of all the regions. In the nominal uh, value uh, they reduced uh, the the debt, and uh, when they get a new lo loan, they bet more favorable conditions. So the regions are be becoming more experienced, and I would like to thank my colleagues for achieving such great results. Next slide, situation by 2019. So we understand what's the budget of the regions for 2018, because according to the number of agreements with the Ministry of Finance, uh, we've uh, analyzed all the parameters, and we can understand that uh, the majority of regions plan income not um, at the level of 14%, but at the level of 4 to 5% per year. They're rather moderate. But I also need to add that every year uh, the regions uh, show different uh, real figures. They have significant deficiency uh, and uh, 600 to 700 million rubles uh, of uh, deficit in the budget. Uh, they, um, when they just start managing the debt, the situation is different, but it's improving. And uh, now it's the second day of the forum. We've heard a lot already that regions uh, get colossal uh, funding, are going to get colossal funding in the nearest three years. So uh, 600 million rubles, that's um, uh, the sum planned uh, to be provided in the next year. There are some additional transfer funds, 600 billion, that's transfer funds, significant increase uh, for the regions. What are the mechanisms for providing uh, financial support for the regions? When there was discussions uh, last year, we talked about several models. First of all, taxes uh, will be given to the regions, or maybe they will have to um, uh, um, they won't have to cover their own expenses. So there was, there were a lot of discussions about that. We see different types of inter-budget transfers, and we see that um, the target-specific transfers uh, now prevail. They are transfers with specific targets and uh, um, indicators, which should be. Um, the goals for the regions under the transfers. Young experts uh, would be interested to learn about the figures. We had 188 um, areas uh, among the uh, inter-budget transfers. 78 of them, they are related to the national projects. So all this funding uh, 
means that our funds for the national projects are very, very um, detailed, and the regions need to make agreements. Uh, five and a half thousand agreements uh, in order to effect this inter-budget transfers. And these are agreements that have to be signed in just uh, one month. Now we have only one and a half agreement signs. Um, the progress is not so bad. And um, uh, this uh, regions know about uh, the obligations. They know all the distributions of funds, as they know the targets which were set for them. They will have to sign under them, and they will have to follow such requirements. Uh, the regions are uh, doing a lot. I'm not pessimistic. I'm sure that all these contracts will be signed uh, within the months as required. I understand that. Um, there will be more contracts signed um, closer to the end of the period, but um, I'm absolutely sure that everything will be fulfilled. Uh, the biggest number of national projects are related with uh, demographics, uh, roads, uh, and uh, 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 cities, and uh, these are the most important areas. National projects uh, have the deadline of uh, six years, and I'm not talking about the three-year budget. Unfortunately, that's not possible to have uh, such good forecast for six years. That's why we are talking about the three-year period. There are some federal projects which are being approved uh, as a benchmark, but um, I'm not reproaching the Ministry of Finance. Uh, the ministry has to redistribute uh, such funds. And as of now, not all the national projects, um, the inter-budget transfers are um, uh, fulfilled. Only 4% of the national projects for 2019 um, uh, do not have any specific transfer assigned to them. 4%, that's about 22 million rubles. In total, we have 600 billion uh, fund. Uh, so uh, the majority of funds already have some inter-budget uh, transfers assigned. And the situation is um, rather interesting. Some experts say that the number of transfers is colossal. How can they imagine, how can regions manage um, uh, this huge amount of paperwork? But uh, we do need to control uh, the movement of funds. That's why we have uh, so many contracts and transfers. We have a specific mechanism of consolidated transfers, consolidated subsidies. Starting from 2017, uh, then we had only 12 consolidated groups of transfers. Now we have 25 groups of uh, subsidies. And now the regions have more possibilities for managing their financial resources. I speak a lot, but there is another slide which is very important which was mentioned yesterday. So we've seen significant changes in the rules of granting subsidies to the regions. Those which are related to the budget funds and the powers of the regions. So here you see the schedule. Blue, uh, the level of budget, minimum level of budget from minimum to the maximum. Uh, Tiva is the minimum, Moskva is the maximum, green, that's the level of financing adopting according to the classical transfers, 70% from the Federation, 30% from the regions and the yellow line. Uh, that's the level of participation of the federal funds in financing of the regions according to the national projects uh, program. 83% of the regions um, see the beneficial uh, results from uh, these changes 
of course Moscow um, lost out here it used to have five percent uh, for transfers now that's zero Moscow is not getting any subsidies from the federal budget for implementing the uh, national projects but uh, Moscow gets some of the inter-budget uh, transfers and there are some other um, regions which saw no changes Ninety-nine percent participation of the Federation, that's significant amount, that's really a breakthrough um, result. And uh, these are the levels approved for every three years. They're not going to be changed a year on year. Probably I spoke too much, but I just wanted to share all this information as the basis uh, for the dis today's discussion. I was thinking about some reasons for this uh, tense relations between the mayor of Moscow with the national project. Huh, now I see Moscow is the only region which lost out uh, with this program of co-financing from the federal budget. Oh, then I understand the approach of uh, the Moscow mayor. Uh, Lavrisa, I have a technical question. So we have some new types of transfers. Uh, the existing system mm, uh, methodology of it, is it changing? There are four types of transfers. There are some methodologies. Do we need to do something else or is everything ready? Everything is uh, ready. All the inter-budget transfers, they are divided into the regions. There are some reserves, uh, but the majority of subjects, um, all the normative acts have been adopted, rules, methodologies. For example, last year we could uh, discuss um, such problems that some acts were not adopted right now. Everything is ready. We just need to make agreements. We just need to find some elements of management. We need to understand what the region is going to be responsible for. Target or non-target use of the federal budget funds, but it will be responsible for KPIs set by the head uh, of the regional projects program. What are the changes? As minister said, we will see uh, the approach to the level of responsibility of the high managers from the region. They will um, have high level of responsibility. Uh, as for punishment for non-fulfillment of goals, here we have changes as well, yes. Um, are we going to see some coercion measures in case some of the measures are not fulfilled? Yeah, I wanted to ask it later, but I'll ask it now. So we can see two different types of um, offenses. First of all, non-target use of budget funds. Second type of offenses, failure to fulfill certain uh, targets which are um, fixed in the negotiations. First of all, non-target use. That's actually uh, the harshest offense. And of course, you'll be punished for that. Uh, you will have to repay uh, the amount. If you fail to fulfill the um, approved targets, the system has changed. Before, we had the requirement to fully repay the transfers, but now uh, the maximum amount is up to t repayment is 10%. But And it also depends on the number of, of the, uh, the scale of failure. So if you will repay pay only the sum which uh, is uh, proportional to what you haven't fulfilled. The relations, uh, so if you have to repay 10%, you will have to, it will change. 
apart from indicated set in uh, the contracts, there are also 15 KPIs for governors, and governors are going to be held responsible for them. Uh, the government is going to say commission uh, with participation of the federal ministries, presidential administration, uh, uh, in order to investigate the reasons for the failure to fulfill uh, the targets, and the measures will be taken accordingly. There will be some personal measures uh, to the high governmental officials, uh, some fines or maybe some other um, measures according to the administrative uh, penalty funds. So the responsibility will be personal. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an interesting uh, new thing. Uh, switching the topics. There were some talks about the commission with representatives of the federal ministry and some other governmental structure. I um, would like to say that you should also invite experts. Mm. And now I'd like to give the floor to one of our experts, Andrei Barachovsky. Andrei Sergeyevich, Sergey Vladimirovich, you always confuse our patronymics. Artem Sergeyevich. I have something to add. We have some expenses, we have incomes, and we have the governmental debt. And the visual picture uh, shows positive trend for the past two years, but this is a result of the tough policy of the federal center. Uh, we are very careful with the expenses. We get some income unexpectedly. We received wonderful in income this year, which was like a windfall for us. We provide uh, budget loans, which are much cheaper than the uh, market level loans. And we also uh, make the uh, contract conditions more strict. Uh, so we have very good relations and uh, it's a very tough vertical. You can get the feeling that the federal center wants to bear more responsibility accordingly. And this is a significant risk. For example, if uh, we structured the national project correctly, everything will work smoothly. Regions can now start borrowing again. And it's something new for the last two years before that. Uh, they stopped uh, lending. We also see a ch change in the share. So, for example, in 26, to, uh, in 2006, 2009, uh, five uh, regions had 50% of all the national level debt. Now it's just 20% of the overall debt. But we don't want to talk about the average figures. We want to talk about specifics. Now, Krasnodar region and Krasnoyarsk regions, they have significant amount of debt. So just these two um, regions, they get 10% from the overall amount. For the tightening uh, from the federal sum uh, center, it's not something what we want to follow. We want to have uh, some room uh, in our relations. Now this costume that we wear is too tight. Yeah, we try to put on some uh, new uh, shiny buttons, but this doesn't help. We just need more room um, in the relations. As it was uh, said during other panel discussion at this forum, we have just two issues, the issue of trust and the issue of confidence at every level. Uh, those who act, they need to be confident that uh, the goals set are important for all the uh, groups of uh, citizens of Russia. Uh, 
Yes, I'm a little bit confused, but you had something to say, even though I asked the wrong person. Igor, as Larissa said, uh, the personal responsibility uh, is uh, enhanced, but what do you think? Uh, do you get uh, sufficient funds? Are you going to get sufficient funds? And if it's insufficient, what can be done about that? What's the situation with the contracts which were mentioned today? Inter-budget relations uh, system, has it uh, really been transformed? There were a lot of changes. Uh, what's your take on it? Are you happy about the new system or uh, there is some room for development? I'd just first like to comment about the two previous statements. We uh, move to the new level of responsibility system. So if you fail to fulfill the targets and the responsibility is personified, that's great. Uh, because a couple of years ago, we had to repay a significant amount of debt. Because in 2016, uh, there was a problem with incomes according to some objective reasons. You remember what happened in 2016. It was a very tough year. And I have a lot of oil companies. And a couple of them um, changed uh, their targets, and so I had to repay 12 billion rubles. As a as a region, I would have been more happy to pay a personal fine. So I had to repay uh, a lot uh, on behalf of the region, and we had to take uh, a loan. I still got this budget money uh, back because we um, rectified the situation. But I still think in such a case, personal responsibility is a better uh, way to fix the problem. I support uh, this um, uh, new method. Yeah, I'll have to pay from my own pocket, but still I support it. Uh, second thing. One of my colleagues uh, said that we need to uh, keep getting thinner and thinner. That's uh, the trend, but uh, we do a lot to limit our expenses. That's difficult for us, and we, but we do it consciously. Uh, 2016, 2017, uh, this year has taught us a lot. It's better to spend less at an initial stage than to start paying more and uh, getting significant blows uh, because we have some social responsibilities related to construction, for example, or renovations. Coming back to the topic of my uh, talk, I've been the governor for seven years already, and uh, I really see significant shifts uh, for in this inter-budget relations. We, the governors, do not need to run from uh, one office to another office of federal officials asking for additional money. So it's been 20 years anniversary last year of the uh, inter-budget relations uh, system, but still, uh, and I think that uh, the results of this transformation is very positive. So we know a very clear figures for the new budget uh, at, at the outset. Um, that's positive. As for the modal budget, it's something we often forget to discuss. Uh, my uh, region, um, it's a northern region, and we get a lot of subsidies. And all this experience uh, of inter-budget relations, um, that's great experience. For our Hungarian region, uh, it worked perfectly. I know that my colleagues may have uh, different opinions, and I spoke about it uh, during the Sochi Forum. But uh, for us, it was good. According to the due to the model budget, which is uh, formed taking into account peculiarity of different regions, we um, transformed um, uh, the situation a lot. There are some peculiarities of every in every region. So there are some specifics of uh, redistribution of social facilities and logistical um, uh, ch channels uh, throughout the region. Every region is specific, and I think that we should continue using the model budget as the foundation when we talk about an individual approach 
to all the regions when we are talking about expenses, our expense obligations. Of course, there is a room for development. Yeah, so the topic related to the minimum uh, salary rate uh, with regional, especially regional and district-based uh, rate is acute uh, in our region. So because different uh, districts in my region have different rates because distribution of residents is different in structure as well. And this aspect, uh, my colleagues from um, municipal administrations know, so like with remote schools, we will never be able to meet um, the standards. So it's not possible to close down a school in a settlement with just 12 kids, but the nearest school would be 130 kilometers away. So um, it would be impossible for parents to get there where their kids are. So such aspects uh, will require further improvement and I realize that our project took a lot of uh, mutual work and I'm approaching those projects. So Arkhangelsk region is involved in this national project. Uh, so we have uh, 19 national projects, 67 federal projects, uh, yes, so uh, many of them are implemented in the territory of the Russian, uh, in our region, of course, so we are not recovering Lake Baikal. Yes, uh, and I'd like to confirm what Larissa said, so everything is clear, uh, it's work in progress uh, for the next three years, so um, we have agreed everything for the next three years. So I have, as a governor, my indicators for six years, and they should be developed when we are talking about the national uh, program. If I uh, have some drawback, I am not getting to a result um, in six years' time. So this result uh, remains relevant for us, and we need to work out some rules which would allow us uh, to set the frameworks and realize the way we are going to act. In national program uh, programs, a very acute process is how you manage process uh, at federal level. We all know well that we need to build uh, a huge distance of roads. And likewise, my colleagues from the regions know that the bitumen um, grew by just 40% uh, in price, and we expect a further growth by 70%, but the conditions for national projects have uh, been uh, in place. So, but there is also a growth for sand and macadam mix and rebars, but the procedures uh, which supports implementing the program uh, regarding the continuous cross-check and follow-up from uh, uh, the industry committees, also in terms of uh, finance. So, I would like to avoid the situation when we begin implementing national programs. Uh, so, once in every six months, we have, what do you call them? Mr. Mutkor has a big uh, committee, uh, state committee on the regional development. You know, so this is a tool for monitoring of how you get prepared to that and uh, specifying the most relevant topics. But the working tool, we will have to create them all together. And I would like to do it together. I would like to pay attention to another aspect of the inter-budgetary relations. So we plan to create a big number of new facilities, uh, new roads, but where should we provide for financial resources to pay taxes, property taxes from the new roads? We will have uh, new sources. Uh, what about kindergartens and schools? 
there is a huge number of people, resources and infrastructure we will f have to further allocate for these goals unless we estimate it together. According to uh, my evaluation annually, I will need additionally some extra uh, 500 million rubles in Arkhangelsk region every year. So as Artem said, this mutual trust implies that we in region need the possibility to be flexible. It would be wiser uh, to weigh out whether we can build a new object or uh, improve or upgrade the existing one. So today I need to build a new school instead of uh, upgrading the existing one. It's not a question to the Minister of Finance, but to the system which is being launched today. And uh, this is a subject of mutual agreement that the region has the right uh, to assess whether the result is likely to be attained, mm, but not due to obvious requirements mm, for mandatory capital investment instead of upgrading existing infrastructure facility. Yes, I'm trying uh, just not to tell you too much. I think this is enough for the first time. Igor, and uh, I would like to uh, use your positive attitude to model-based budget. And so Arkhangelsk is the informal capital of the Arctic. Why informal? Yes, yeah, so it's uh, not written. You know, so back in 2017 at a forum, uh, our president said, uh, all guests are welcome in the capital of the Russian North. And I would like to accept uh, this wording. Well, an excellent option. But look, when we first uh, developed this model-based uh, budget, and we started to uh, discuss the situations in the extreme north, in the Arctic, so, um, they were largely ignored in the calculations. But now we are launching the national projects. In terms of financial resources allocated for implementing these goals, uh, would you see well, they, uh, that the Arctic regions are being ignored? So, colleagues, this will be the case, definitely. Uh, and the reason is that when we are talking about the Arctics, the northern regions of the Russian Federation, so you need to understand that Arkhangelsk region uh, has special climate, special soil conditions. It's the extreme north, so the conditions for um, SME development are quite different because it uh, entails a big uh, range of social obligations, a special salary rate, shorter working day for women. You need to pay uh, like uh, vacation twice a year uh, with a travel. So of course the business is less competitive. And in the level of uh, high quality routes in our country region is 14 point Two percent, according to presidential decree, we need to reach fifty percent, and there were a lot of calculations on how much the federal center can allocate to us and all the opportunities. So, and we arrived at uh, thirty-two percent as a maximum, both for the Archangel region and the federal center, and also the production resources. Once we start these discussions, we realize that we need to be at 50%, but how is it at all possible? Well, you may say 65 uh, or 70% is achievable in some regions, and we have the cases, but we have an integrated evalu quality uh, of life evaluation in the Russian Federation. So our Hungarian region is at uh, 72nd position, so because uh, so, road network availability is one of the indicators. So, with 
this step, the objective reality, we are trying to initially undermine the possibility of living in the Arctic area. So, but what type of game is this? Especially when we are talking about different rankings and ratings, we should together be very cautious because it entails damage for uh, Arkhangelsk region where you have uh, a lot of oil and uh, gas and uh, mineral resources uh, so and the system of uh, state defense so the Arctic uh, Navy fleet is also based in our region so we support the state but uh, our position is a little bit uh, worse compared to others. So this is an open discussion. We're not complaining. The Russian Federation keeps talking to us. So at the moment, I think the forum uh, will arrive to our region in April back again. And I hope that the president will remember about us. Because we have a working group at the Ministry of Economic Development um, on small and medium enterprises development and I'm a co-chairman so it's top left and I have uh, don't have uh, another co-chairman so Arctic area allows uh, special attention sorry for uh, taking uh, much of your time but uh, this is a painful point so also um, the law on pensions. It has some details related to the Arctic areas. And we shouldn't ignore that we have people that work in such territories where you have little employment and uh, show they are in uh, community initiative. So they were deprived of their uh, insurance part of the pension. So, and I said, colleagues, Let's assess uh, how um, all laws uh, we make um, should be assessed uh, as applied to the Arctic region. So we need to focus on Arctic, we need to love it. So it's not just uh, a place with a lot of gaps and holes, but uh, we have living people there. Thank you. I think in three months time, we all need to head to your Arctic forum where we will have a chance for a more detailed discussion. So, now, uh, I would like to uh, pass it over to Dmitry Svatkovsky. You are not a public official. You are a representative of um, people, of the population. You are a frequent guest to the region. So, you are fresh from a region. And how can you describe our feelings uh, in the region and the readiness of the regions to implement national projects and if they feel there are enough resources to back them. If you are, would like me to talk about my family, thank you for gathering me here. So 20 years ago I was to this hall as a student and I uh, used to work together with Yuri Roslikov when he worked uh, in the government of Moscow. Then Sergei Nikolaevich was auditing me when I, I was a vice uh, governor of uh, Nizhny Novgorod, and now I'm representing the state Duma. And as for Larissa, uh, so it's an alma mater for both of us. And I would like to confirm, so it's the 10th anniversary of the Guiders Forum, because uh, many alumni in the public authorities, so they are they come here for training and retraining to improve their administration skills and importantly today we are touching upon a very critical topic and the budget uh, which was submitted to the state duma this year so it's unique yes not only about having a surplus um, and um, so people um, would like to have this 40 USD per barrel as a threshold and we discussed this th threshold for uh, one week in the state Duma and it was in October when the oil price was 80 USD per barrel yes so and we were telling them uh, 
keep calm so nobody is going to tell you uh, the oil price in one month's time and now it's going down so it's our safety cushion um, if you remember uh, as discussed yesterday at the plenary so Vladimir Mao was asking experts one and the same question when we are going to have the crisis the recession and all people were very uh, cautious so no one wanted to be a prophet so they said we are expecting it but we are not going to tell you when so people were quite uh, cautious but why are we telling about that because the budget and national projects and this year 2000 has started so the budget has been uh, approved 85 regions understand what they got and the budget and I would like to use this opportunity to tell Larissa and all other colleagues from the Ministry of Finance I would like to thank them so the budget approval was uh, very difficult this year but for every question there was an answer and for the first time the interbudgetary relations and transfers they were not submitted on the uh, 25th of December but back in October and all regions could add their subsidies to their budget so ideally we would like to have these numbers in uh, late August or September it would be truly helpful because uh, this is provided for by the budgetary code and of course today we can talk about challenges we have ahead so first of all uh, what's the nature of the budgetary disputes some have a more some have less so and the fact that we have a model based uh, today so the methodology is very complicated and I realize that today the data center works a lot so it sees all budgets from federal to uh, municipal and we uh, talk little about uh, the municipal administrations uh, which will make the final decisions regarding the budget and importantly the methodology in place as Igor correctly said governors stopped um, storing uh, across the Ministry of Finance uh, begging for um, peanuts now we have a clear methodology it's all transparent and it makes understanding easier it improves transparency and it contributes to the correct way of how interbudgetary transfers are made so of course ideally we need to minimize their quantity but I think uh, so the road will be ahead uh, for those who are willing to go but we need to resolve it at the level of uh, regions and municipal administrations so but I would like to go back to my original third the main reason uh, has to do with the authorities interbudgetary relations are about the price of the authorities so we are asking give us more we can't assess uh, the price of authorities at the federal level at regional level and at municipal level and so on at the level of a village or a settlement so and this is a pending question it's very challenging and the national projects are a trigger to launch an expert discussion on how we structure our financial policy next if we would like to set serious ambitious goals never achieved in this country before then approaches to our budgetary policy should change in line with these ambitious goals and um, Practice. If we don't have any reference points, then it's going to be like this. We will have money, then they will be kept um, at the accounts, and they, we will struggle on whether uh, to get them back or not. So this is a challenge. Uh, the main challenge is the management and the project uh, structure. And uh, at the State Duma, we had a discussion 
on a control and the search uh, for the solutions together with the counting chamber to support all structures, all level of the all levels of the power to find the right uh, way for project management to show them the light at the end of the tunnel and the way to go 85 different regions 85 different roles but the goals are the same we have an individual at the end with the different uh, torps types of results whether it's done or, or not so as Artem said whether our life became better or not we can spend a lot of money but are we going is our life going to improve so this is a question we need to answer by re realizing by implementing the national project we will have the parliamentary control and the three side committee consisting of uh, uh, the council of federation and ministries uh, so and there is a solution one of the rights uh, solutions during the budget discussion was that this committee was given the authority to make such solution for the constituents to feel how weak um, the government is in responding to challenges in national project implementation so it's a big aid when we would remove administrative barriers and give people the authority to make quick decisions so that's the correct way and we need to further develop it, removing that complex mechanism on who, how, and how um, can lead it to the project uh, which is of interest to everyone. And I would like to share, well, in my conclusion, I would like to share my third. So yesterday at a plenary, we had a lot of talk about investment. So we had graph uh, number four, which I really liked about uh, the volume of an investment. So we need to figure seriously on investment, the taxation base, and mitigating the tax load on the constituents. We need to think about the incentive. What are we giving to them? Will we dis redistribute uh, the taxation base existing at the level of the government? So we need to create uh, funding sources for ambitious goals we set and it's only possible in case of investment and the goal investment uh, set before us 25 percent of the gdp it's really ambitious so at the moment we have data for november 2018 but by february we will get some more serious figures from the rostad which will be in the region of 12 to 14 to 16 percent and it's a big challenge for us all and in most cases, we approved the budget for 2019, but we have already left it behind because it's all clear of what we're going to do in 2019. And we also need to think about 2012, 2021, 2022, 2023. That's a very small step for an investment project. Every investment project, that's uh, the period uh, starting from three years, it's only the best case scenario and when it's uh, there is a very strict control by the governor and in case this is um, a facility uh, which is uh, uh, extremely important for the region and to conclude uh, I wanted to say that we can talk about uh, money but we need to understand who is going to manage the funds at the level of professionalism and decision making who is going to be there at the regional uh, federal and municipal uh, level. I see a lot of heads of municipal um, governments. Uh, you say you all are going to take decisions all together, but uh, there is a personal responsibility and we need to know about the level of professionalism of uh, the people. We need to know whether uh, they can uh, take decisions adequately and professionally. So a human being, a manager, is um, of paramount importance. It's more important than uh, amount of money. So 
as we um, did it with the World Championship 2018. No one believed that we will achieve a lot, but we actually managed uh, to show the best World Championship in the history of the global football. I was thinking what the professional sportsman is going to say. Of course, he talked about sport. Dmitry, you talked about the model budget. You also said um, about uh, powers uh, for different levels of government. So we learned about the support of this idea. What do you think about the model budget? Mm. Yes, we have some tasks uh, from uh, the national budget, but what's your personal approach to that? I think that this um, road is a correct one. It gives clear assessment of the budget. We have all the information within the information system of the Ministry of Finance. We see all the levels. I think that's a correct uh, direction. Uh, there is a lot of room for development if we want to reach an ideal situation. We've just started just two years, right? Two years, that's peanuts. Uh, we've just had a crisis in 2014, then we uh, had uh, the period of major geopolitical turmoil. And in the global uh, community, uh, there is a lot of instability. We don't know what's going to happen with Brexit, what's going to happen with Euro. I watched Euro News uh, today in the morning. I have the feeling that something major is looming over the Europe, over Europe. And this model budget that we have today, that's the correct road. And I think that we need to uh, go down this path. And the situation which we have is the um, municipal finance. That's something which can influence different processes through uh, the balance and through the transfers provided through the regions. Um, the situation is far from the ideal, but the road was chosen correctly. Uh, let's ask uh, our experts something else. I'd like to give uh, the floor to Alexander Derugin. Alexander Nikolaevich is a practitioner and a theoretician. Uh, he has a lot of experience in um, different areas. He knows how to calculate theoretical figures. He knows a lot about formulas related to budget transfers. He knows how to calculate minute uh, details, some adjustment coefficients. That's what he likes to um, invent. So what's your response to the things you've heard from the panel? Thank you. I'm not going to talk about formulas and coefficients. I want to talk about something else. Larissa was talking about the results of fulfillment of the region budgets for 2018. You've seen significant growth rates. Um, and uh, even after the results of the ninth year uh, months, we could see that our results are going to be great. So we didn't talk about the deficiency of funds, we were talking about spending. I think um, a year from now we are going to talk about some different things. We need to understand uh, why did we have so much income in 2018 as compared to 2017. Oil prices have drawn, grown dramatically on the average for the year and we had 20 um, percent uh, ruble devaluation. So. Uh, the, if you uh, take ruble, the growth of oil price is even much higher, uh, and uh, that's beneficial for the federal and for the regional budget, and not only uh, beneficial for the oil producing regions. And that's a well known multiplication effect. I don't think we can expect similar results next year. I don't think we're going to see the similar devaluation of ruble. Of course, there could be some external factors, and I think some uh, level of devaluation will be there. But if you're not going to have any additional external factors, and oil prices are not growing dramatically as compared to the average level of 2018, 
then I think next year we are not going to see some uh, real growth uh, of the income in the regions. Just the nominal growth is going to be there. That's my opinion. All the projects uh, that we have in 2015, 16, 17 will be with us in 2019. We will have the same problems mentioned by Artem Barachowski. Regulation from the federal level, uh, regulation through the inter-budget relations is rather tough. And uh, we had some uh, break with regards to powers, financial assessment of powers, and um, the price of such powers of different regions. This was not um, at the forefront of discussions, but I think we need to come back to uh, that type of discussions. We need to change the system of decision making under uh, the new system of powers. Financial and economic justification for the federal laws, uh, they uh, envisage uh, the expansion of powers which may require additional financing. Uh, and uh, these justifications sometimes uh, say that no additional budget is required. And that's not surprising because we are not talking about uh, federal spending, we are talking about regional spending. If we compare the volume of a real expense of the regions, consolidated expenses, I didn't have time to calculate the percentage to GDP, maybe 12%, something like that. If we look at real expenses, consolidated real expenses of regional budgets um, of for year 20, 2007, 2008, it will be much higher than right now. Uh, with the same level of powers and slightly increased level of powers, uh, federal law 184 about the powers of the regions. Uh, the number of powers after uh, adjustments uh, to the law were adopted, so they had 45 powers, now they have 111 powers. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The scope has grown, but not proportionally to this number, 45 to 111. The values of weights are different, but still, the number of issues regions have to be responsible for. Mm, this is a real dangerous uh, trend. We need to stop it somehow. And as far as I understand, the Minister of Finance had a project related to the assessment of the number um, and value of our powers, not only from uh, Law 184, but also outside of this law. Unfortunately, there are a lot of powers of that kind. As far as I understand, we need to make some organizational um, conclusions made. Maybe such regulatory norms should be uh, withdrawn. I had a question uh, whether it will be uh, to the panelist. Maybe it's not a question to the Ministry of Finance. The government should take such a decision. But I wanted to uh, say that now we see a growing number of powers and the depth of regulation from the federal level. But on the other hand, we see uh, the differentiation between the regions on the number of the budget funds. If we compare the GDP of the most developed regions with the uh, GDPs of the least developed regions, then we'll see that uh, the gap is not being closed. So, for example, Moscow and the Moscow region plus St. Petersburg and Leningrad region, there's the biggest agglomerations. The share in GDP uh, of these regions is not uh, going down. It's expanding. It can uh, go up to 50%. Now it's about 35, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the this There is no... Um, gap closing, uh, the uh, differentiation between the regions is rather high. 
so the um, regions are in a very um, difficult position so everyone wants uh, regions to provide the equal quality of services but we have major fiscal differentiation among the regions and right now we have to make a choice where are we going to move in the future whether we abandon the excessive regulations from the federal government or we need to dramatically change the system of uh, the adjusting subsidies we need to um, level up the situation according to the number of powers of every region on the one hand uh, this additional adjustment program will reduce uh, the motivation of the regions uh, to ensure economic development and of course we can't um, diminish the number of incentives otherwise the regions won't grow but we don't want to see this additional pressure from the federal level we don't want uh, because the government wants every region to provide the uh, similar level of uh, quality of services so there are two parallel tasks you can't solve them in parallel you need to find a consensus about the, in between them and i don't see such a um, solution uh, to this dilemma because uh, there there is um, uh, this is very controversial. Okay, adjustment or development? Yes, just solve this dilemma. But as we know, this dilemma is unsolvable. Or is there a solution? Mm, but we need to continue working on solving them. I can give the floor to Yuri Vitalievich uh, later on, but now I'd like to ask uh, the audience to say something. I see a lot of representatives from the regions. Could you please share your opinions about your level of preparedness, uh, about the challenges, financial challenges you see uh, in this inter-budget relations uh, system so that uh, the project you implement goes smoothly and provide uh, efficiency and uh, all we uh, can achieve uh, our national goals. I can see that uh, we have Galina uh, Zislavna. I see the Minister of Finance of uh, the Komi Republic. I see a big delegation from Orenburg. I have some people from Kamchatka, the government of Kamchatka. Okay, there are some volunteers. Thank you. Uh, say a couple of words about yourself, and you have three minutes for your intervention. Uh, yes, if you share your problems, we will try to come and visit you and solve your problems. My name is uh, Sirata and uh, represent uh, Taganrog city. I'm representatives of the Commission of the Tax and Fiscal Policy. Our national policies, how are we going to trickle them down to municipalities? Taganrog is a historical city. Uh, Chekhov and Ronevsky were born there. Uh, the city which uh, won in the Crimean War. Uh, it's uh, very unique in the history of Russia, uh, very unique history. We have the sixth uh, place in IT outsourcing in Russia. The president asked us to create the comfortable urban environment. But we have a problem. The Pushkin embankment is the only embankment um, in the region which is collapsing. Um, there is a, a, a problem with that. We are writing to everyone, how can we get funds uh, within the frameworks of uh, the national program? There are no pro pro programs for us. We need to update our roads, but uh, there is huge systems under the roads. And last year, um, we had a major collapse of a road. We spent our own money, then we get uh, reimbursed from uh, the uh, budget. How can we continue fixing roads when we have some problematic uh, huge collectors under uh, this surface? It takes billions uh, to fix uh, such roads, and it's expensive for us. 
we have a um, uh, 50 year old tramway uh, tracks uh, it takes a lot of money to update them but we do not have sufficient funds in our budget we have a lot of historical buildings and unfortunately we have a lot of problems with the comfort um, for uh, the environment. We have a lot of uh, developers and they don't care where to live. They all just take laptops and move to Krasnodar where it's much more comfortable for city dwellers. How can we get some funds under the national projects? We are ready to participate. We are ready to uh, sweat. Um, we uh, were here uh, before. We spoke with deputies. We spoke with representatives of municipalities of different regions. We wanted to understand how the municipalities could get some money from the national program funds. If you don't mind, I'll, uh, I'd like to ask you to start uh, to, to wait with your questions until the later stage of uh, the session. We'll come back to the questions. We will answer your question uh, at a later stage. Okay, uh, Dmitry is ready to answer uh, right now. No, I can't give an answer, but I can give you an advice. I'm not uh, the governor of a region, unfortunately urban environment. That's the federal program. We have such a federal program. We've increased uh, the funding for this program. You have to speak uh, with uh, the regional uh, management and you need to apply them with your uh, problem. Urban environment. We've increased a lot of uh, funding for this program, as I've said. For example, the Nizhny Novgorod region. Uh, that's one mandate. Instead of just one region, which was there last year, we have uh, five regions right now in one in my one mandate uh, district. You see, it's a significant increase. Clean uh, country. It's a party project by United Russia. Uh, that's a very big one. Uh, and according to this project, there will be an increase in funds. Uh, such uh, funds are already earmarked for the region. Uh, but we do not know very clearly how these funds are distributed among the municipalities. Larissa explained that a fine, uh, five and a half thousand Agreements only one and a half thousand are already signed. When Rostov region signs all the necessary agreement for inter-budget transfers, there will be a later on redistributions of funds for the municipalities. You need to wait and uh, the uh, municipality will redistribute uh, the funds. Uh, we do have much more funds for projects of this type and I can give you an example of uh, my region. We have a border with uh, Rostov and the uh, um, situation is very simple, I think, in my region and in your region. Okay, maybe I was not right, not asking uh, Yuri Rosliak in the very beginning. Audited chamber uh, is tradition has traditionally a very uh, specific um, position sometimes they are as um, they don't agree with the opinions of uh, other um, institutions so we need to be very careful talking to them because they often criticize projects uh, Vladimir thank you very much I do not agree with your assessment of the auditing chamber because our main task, according to the new strategy of development of our institution, is to be an assistant, is to help, to be an advisor, and uh, try to fix uh, some errors which we can uh, fix when we analyze the situation. And we can propose uh, some initiatives for discussion. The conclusions that we make 
they uh, should be heard by the wider public so that in the end we have more clear and predictable policy and the system of relations between uh, the federal government and the regions, especially when we have very ambitious goals. Uh, for example, this uh, decree by the president, uh, which says that despite all the errors, we need to achieve a qualitative breakthrough and uh, have a very specific improvements for the life uh, of uh, people in different regions. Every region, of course, has a different um, level of responsibility. They have different problems. They have different goals, uh, which all, all, all of them are, will be included in the overall federal project. Of course, you can't compare the Arhangelsk region and Moscow or the Moscow region. Uh, because, of course, uh, the conditions are different and requirements of uh, those who live in the uh, regions are different. 50,000 cars uh, mm, or 10 cars uh, on a road, a uh, very different story. But we need to ensure that the road is uh, safe for all the citizens of Russia. Uh, we already discussed the powers of uh, the region. So there are powers according to uh, law 131, uh, powers of the municipalities, but they are uh, the uh, laws adopted in 2004. Conditions and situation in Russia uh, were completely different. We had different tasks for the social and economic development. Uh, we have a new period starting from 2012. We have the program and target method of managing development. What has changed in the inter-budget relations after we switched to a new method? I don't think that every expert can say that nothing has changed. We used to have the methodology for redistributing inter-budget transfers, and we have the same methodology. And uh, Larissa Alexandrovna does a lot to take into account all the specifics, all the peculiarities and uh, um, the availability of budget funds. So they do a lot uh, in order to make some adjustments. But unfortunately, the main approaches, they do not change. If you had an opportunity to analyze um, the situation with the state projects, according to the tasks of the president, uh, the uh, decrees of the president, we can say the following. Specific uh, expenses uh, which were carried out by every uh, subject according to the degree of the president, they were not taken into account within the budget. Uh, I have some slides. Could you please uh, put them up on the screen? Here they are. So this is information that we need to work on for improving the inter-budget relations. Decrees of the president from 2012, uh, when there is not uh, enough uh, financing, uh, led to the situation when we have this huge debt of uh, 2 trillion uh, rubles. Um, regions didn't have other sources of financing, uh, but uh, the requirements were set by the president. Now we have a decree uh, 204, and it has even more ambitious goals, more ambitious than in 2012, um, because uh, it talks about the quality, uh, uh, about the standard of living, about some qualities in medical uh, housing services, improving the comfort of uh, the urban living. So all of these, that's something which is related not to the regions. Uh, who should implement such ambitious goals? Municipalities, of course. Uh, they need support from the federal uh, budget and from the regional budget. Uh, but who evaluated resources? What's the cost of uh, re 
reaching these goals set for the constituents of the Russian Federation and municipalities uh, which are part of them. So we can keep discussing of whether the budget is balanced on Group 1, but look at this budget of the constituent of the Russian Federation on expenses on executing uh, the powers. For today, the Russian Federation uh, limited uh, the sh deficit and limited the possibility to uh, raise debt. Why? Because this is the only possibility for the constituents who have access to the market to cover for the budgetary shortage. But everything was done to limit uh, the possibility of a deficit. If we look at into the budget of the Russian Federation using the main tool we offer to use ahead, apart from technological uh, deficit, we have uh, evaluation of uh, financial budget for uh, executing powers. And uh, little of us consult these documents, but this is an uh, information electronic a database and it should be subject for shaping expert evaluation. So um, the subject of evaluation of uh, the regions is of uh, 600 uh, uh, billions of rubles uh, of deficit. So if uh, expenses uh, for health care guarantees is part of that, well, you should agree that uh, it should be changes. So the existing system, when we drop down to the actual execution, not the demand of the previous year's budget. So this is a good system because it's an element of the system. But it doesn't resolve uh, the goal we have for today. So and um, uh, this work uh, requires balancing. We need to, an inventory of our powers. So it's going on for three years and we have no results. So amendments to uh, law 181 and 131 were not made, so the evaluation by the Minister of Economic Development and the Minister of Finance uh, um, is going on, so nobody is taking the decision. So the decision has to be taken at least gradually. And I would like to um, attract your attention to part number two, of mandatory and inevitable uh, expenses for every constituent of the Russian Federation. So, national project shaped some special uh, target purposes for uh, implementing costs in the territory, but nobody evaluated uh, re respective uh, expenses, and uh, the Council of Strategic uh, Planning sent on the 30th of November to develop in two weeks time a public uh, program for implementing national uh, projects in your territory. So the constituents, uh, I think that they coped with that and I would like to check on whether it's uh, it can be applied uh, for all national project. But the methodology says that not direct expenses which are funded from the federal level in this nice percentage should be evaluated by the constituent of the Russian federations, but in total all expenses we sh should provide for the results uh, for every indicator. And I would like to ask municipal administrations. So if we would like to arrive to the f number of 120 million of square meters of residents, uh, well, which would be specific for the demand uh, and would comply with the quality. What uh, would you need to do well, if nobody would give you a single ruble? Well, you will be promised uh, 200 um, million rubles. Well, you need um, social infrastructure facilities and uh, generating facilities of sewage in Taganrog. So these are all expenses which uh, will inevitably emerge at your level to implement the goal set by the president. We don't have that evaluation, but there are two particular parts of this uh, block of costs. 
So this course uh, could not be leveled using any methodology like you do for authorities. They are specific for conditions of implementing a project in the territory of a constituent. And secondly, it should be based on the project uh, management uh, methods. I hope all of you know project management uh, methods. So the project uh, management methods implies for the entire events, you need to arrive to the end goal. Evaluation of all goals, so we mentioned uh, bitumen, metal, which should be balanced, labor resources. We have the number of construction industry workers going down, and we need to bridge the gap and financial support of the project. So this funding as part of the bigger uh, project management system should be guaranteed. It's not possible to put it like this or whether you have money or not. We must be clear that we need resources to support the project. And if we have risks in terms of financial support, we will need mechanisms to cover uh, for the risk and bridge the gaps uh, using um, instruments like uh, municipal bonds, uh, instruments which we sadly fail to use. We use our debts to finance uh, the deficit of the current expenses, which have no sources for recovery. Yes, uh, I know we have more slides. So, but that's the main uh, principal slide and the arrows as our respected governor said. Once uh, we improve our changes, uh, we also need to make changes to our current course. So if we used to have one school, now we have three schools, we need to increase the number of staff by three times. And this should be translated into the course structure. But how? So back in 2004, our president ordered that we need to uh, create a register of our cost obligations. It was created, but now. But using all the potential of the digitalization, it's not fully used. It should list and qualify all authorities. And the second block would be cost for program implementation. And it should be not provided for three years, but through the register, you can offer a chain for the entire six years, because many projects uh, take over uh, three years. They should uh, ideally begin in 2019 to be successfully implemented by 2022. So people who do this understand that this is a gradual work which should be adequately planned. and. Uh, we must learn to evaluate whether budgets are balanced using a methodology with the two major components which define uh, the main balance for the constituents of the Russian Federation. Given that we will monitor expenses on implementing national projects, so the system for control over regional budgets uh, must be based on a balance of uh, profits and loss on authorities as shaped by the register of expense obligations. So this tool should be launched to objectively evaluate the demand and balance it with the opportunities. Now I would like you to show us the second slide. Yeah, have a look at the blue component, the subsidy for the balance. What was going on at the moment when constituents were in hard times? See at the drop, but have a look at how they grew the special target subsidies. They are not part in the uh, conditions when everything is balanced. And how intra-budgetary transfers grew. And the next slide, please. So this is the correlation between the number of indicators, the growth rates of federal budgets, the growth rates for consolidated uh, budgets. 
wonder if anyone can comment whether these activities from 2010 and Thedros have any systemic approach. As Larissa said, what we corrected in 2018. Have a look at how the aid from uh, constituents of the Russian Federation grew. So this is called manual management, but this is not systemic. It's not at least 80% balance. So uh, some budget are full, some like money, but there should be a system for a fair and transparent and clear distribution of the resources. This is something essential for the constituents of the Russian Federations. Governors present here are likely to say that the main point when you start to work over implementing the national projects is predictability and uh, objective nature of the situation when the constituents of Russian federations are evaluating, even uh, if the governors of the regions are personally responsible. But we need to look on where we are heading to and how we can guarantee results. So this is the topic uh, I raised last time at this forum on uh, balanced authorities. And we added to this part what we have to do in order to achieve the goals of our national project. So this has to be done within 2019 while we are upgrading all these regional uh, level uh, projects. And we will have a lot of imbalances like this recently. And we will have to develop a defense system. And I would agree with the experts that uh, this growth in 2019 is no guarantee that this favorable situation will remain in 2019 and uh, the next years. And we need to be ready to take these risks into the account. Sorry um, for talking for long. Yeah, thank you. A very exciting observation. To dear colleagues, I need to praise the Russian Academy of Ra National Economy and Public Administration that allow us uh, to hear for different types of opinion. And also, uh, as Dmitry remembered, um, I worked with the Academy for long, and I remember how in uh, 2003 I defended my doctoral thesis here on the budget. So, uh, Viktor Kristenko was uh, press minister here and also our current uh, first uh, uh, deputy minister on the budgetary relations defended her thesis uh, so life related to the interbudgetary relations uh, is going on here at the in the academy yes and to make a short statement, I would like to uh, hand it over to Ludmila Pronina. We have a lot of structures here in the Academy, a lot of structures related to innovations in the budgetary area. So, Ludmila, what are uh, innovations in your case? Yes, uh, allow me um, to speak standing. Uh, I'm really grateful. I love Main Finn, but I love uh, the State Duma even more. And I would like to focus on uh, Mr. Svetkovsky's uh, presentations. It's very important for municipal to mention municipalities, municipal reforms. They are not standing still. There was an important municipal reform back in 2016, and we got uh, five new types of municipalities. And we completely changed the distribution of uh, authorities. It all went up. So municipalities um, lost uh, half of their authorities at the municipal level. And it's very important, and I fully agree, that we need to calculate the uh, cost of uh, expense authorities. We had inventory in the regions which uh, was not applicable to the regions. As for the project uh, plan, so we pay serious attention in our academy and we are not successful if we are not applying it to national and federal programs. And now, uh, Valeria, sorry, not just, I'm not the only one to confuse, yes, yes, but I have an example in front of my eyes. 
So, you know, we don't look too closely at different methods uh, that we must use to support the link between the budgetary and social link. So our uh, budgetary and taxation policies are separate from social policies. Importantly, a new concept on funding social areas related to the uh, public and municipal order. And we have not paid attention to that as part of our discussion. So this is a revolution. So look, uh, we used the concept of per capita funding and uh, uh, it was only used in the uh, mandatory health care insurance and in education. But now it's about to be introduced in all areas. So again, what's related to the two methods of social services providing. So the tender procedure and the certificate. So certificate is equally important when you have three draft laws adopted. Yes, so it would be as important as vouchers. Allow me these comparisons we used to have long ago. So social services in all areas uh, apart from culture, sadly, preschool education, additional education. So it will be for free. Uh, parents will uh, almost not pay nothing. So because we will have the links uh, with the uh, non-governmental organ and non-commercial organizations. Uh, but what's related to the higher vocational education, so the tender, the bidding procedures will be limited. So let me know. Um, could you please offer a conclusion? Yeah, because otherwise we are going in some very deep and broad topics. A couple of words about uh, the problems of regions and municipalities. So we need to introduce it for sure, but the opposite tendency is that municipalities and regions have the right to either leave this funding as part of uh, state and municipal orders or to move to this new system. So I believe that uh, this freedom is excessive and we need to focus on efficiency of this establishment. Otherwise, you are saying that the governor of a said so everything works well. We need to work with that and this link is important. This is also about implementing national projects and I would like um, to invite you, Dmitry, to work over these three components when you are making amendments to the budgetary uh, code and uh, having special target uh, subsidies. So, dear colleagues, as a moderator, I hope we, we have a lot of time, but we are really pressed for time now, and so I would like to rush ahead, Igor. Yes, uh, well, I cannot ignore you. Well, we heard a lot about the system of relations between the regions and uh, the municipalities. Uh, uh, I had a question from the colleague from Taganrog. I would like to answer you as a governor. Uh, let's take the regional project Taganrog. So, with my colleagues at municipal and city level, I have to use the language uh, Russian federal authorities used to me. If, and it's applicable to all the countries, if you want to get transfers and launch changes in the territory, uh, you need to become part of the system of work over national projects. For two to three years, I teach my municipalities uh, this project management, and my achievements are modest because all budgets are focused on a requirement on the part of the region. And I would tell colleagues, colleagues, provide me a project called my district or my city, which will take into the account sewage, roads, and everything which should be subject to change. And we, as the Federation, will make them part of the federal project. And at the moment, people keep saying, telling, I need a school, I need uh, 
like huge pipeline. Uh, but unless you switch to this mood, in our relations we are not getting anywhere. And secondly, responding to Ludmilla's remark, you know, we are so fed up with those changes uh, in the system of uh, region to municipality. And I'm terrified uh, uh, waiting for new changes. Well, it's catastrophic. I don't know uh, what else is uh, going on. Uh, and it's very hard to create this institute of interaction. Don't forget that a municipality is about uh, strict obligations, shortage of uh, uh, human resources, and a low salary. So, and it impacts uh, professionals capable of carrying out their obligation at this level. And I cannot tell anything to my colleagues from Tug and Rock. If they are not uh, involved in this, we will have to manage them from above uh, by our numbers, uh, with all our limitations in terms of numbers. So when we are we're talking about this uh, vertical, uh, so understanding of the responsibility is really, really responsible. And I would really like to have as little changes as possible. So dear colleagues, then I need to change our agenda. Then let's proceed to the closing remarks of our panelists because we would like our speakers. Yes, so, and questions could be asked informally um, during the informal sessions of, of the Guider Forum. I would like Sergey to respond and also uh, Dmitry and Larissa to respond to what's going on. Yeah, because Larissa uh, owns all the money. Yes, I believe many uh, attendees will agree with me that the situation is very exciting and the conversation was uh, very useful. We had a lot of proposals given the basic understanding that we are living a very important time period with project passports, with the need for agreements and the scope. Uh, so, which appears to be um, tremendous, 5.5 uh, thousand. So, and I have doubts that we managed to do it uh, by the 15th of February by our joint efforts. It's important to see how we are about to start. So, uh, the conversation is very timely, and I'm very happy with the results of our today's discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Well, of course, our discussion was uh, more dynamic and was more focused on the result. We were not discussing any conceptual things, but some very uh, relevant things we would like to arrive at. And uh, I like that we all uh, had one and the same message, because we need to understand that we represent different branches of the power and different levels of the power, and it's important that we arrived at the desired result. Of course, we can't achieve everything uh, from the very first time. We need to understand that we're not going to have a miracle in 2019, first half year, all the projects are going to... Uh, uh, take uh, impetus and it is a slow process but uh, we should think about this point of uh, no return what are uh, what is most important about these projects I used to be a sportsman so I think that we need to um, start uh, very well with very good um, speed but then you shouldn't uh, be exhausted so that you can accelerate at the very uh, last moment you need to be one of top three this is uh, just a tactical solution but uh, we all are goal-oriented uh, the Federation Council the region the municipalities uh, even the Ministry of Finance is together with us in the same boat. That's great. We are all roaring in the same direction. We want to improve uh, the situation. We are cooperating. And I believe in our mutual goal. 
I've just gone through the six-year cycle of preparing a region for the World Championship just from the start. Six years title. And yesterday, uh, Nizhny Novgorod turned into a city where life is comfortable. So six years, they were very successful years. Uh, so I have at least an example of one region. We have to do more because now people's expectations um, improved. They want to have the higher living standard. That's a new level of responsibility. That's a new uh, way. Um, that's a new uh, responsibility. You need to c keep raising this bar. We started from a very low uh, level. Uh, now uh, we are. Um, we have a much higher level and uh, the expectations are high. Larissa Alexandrovna, we are now again using a lot of uh, sports terminology. Top three sportsmen, medalists. Uh, what can we do to make sure that all the regions reach uh, the finish line? In my character, character, I am a sprinter. But and I think that some of the regions will be lagging behind. Some of uh, the regions will be champions. Champions. Uh -huh. We have the possibility to change financial resources, adjust them. We have such mechanisms, and this is great. And we have a goal to find the uh, golden mean uh, between the tight-fitting costume and the loose costume. Uh, I like this metaphor as well. When we started uh, uh, during the heat of the discussion, we were talking about let's change everything. Some other people were saying, calm down, don't uh, change anything. We keep transformations, we uh, go gradually, we will all always have redistribution of powers, there will be some fine tuning. Some experts say that. Uh, that we are go we need to see really the distribution of powers some people are mm, very anxious to see some real results uh, we had a big meeting in December about that together with the um, deputy minister uh, who is responsible for that mm, in the government we sometimes want to have immediate results but it's not always possible to see them. Yuri says that since 2004, nothing uh, has uh, changed, and I was not uh, happy about that. We've been discussing something for 20 years. Are you going to say that nothing has happened in 20 years? Life is changing, and the requirements and the structures are going to change. We want to see over uh, achievements in some of the regions, under achievements in the other regions, but all the parameters uh, for the subjects of the Russian Federation are going to improve. We have some risks about the level of income, but um, we are very cautious here. We understand that regions have some provisions, and I'm very optimistic about that. I may be more um, optimistic than some other expert who spoke out today. I'm sure that um, the situation will improve. Yuri, just one brief comment. Larissa, I'm not criticizing you. I'm telling you that you are fine-tuning these little programs, but you can't do the changes when you are just trying to uh, put patches on an old costume. You need to change the costume, um, just just change it completely. So I wanted to uh, finish with uh, this phrase uh, by the representative of the Ministry of Finance. Our uh, life is going to become better. And uh, see you next year at uh, this forum. Thank you.